Very good Thursday to everybody. We are in the last 11 days of March and the first of the three spring months, meteorologically speaking anyway. This is the last seven days of the CDAS. You can see here below average across Central and Western Europe. We've got warmer than average across much of uh, Norway, Sweden, Finland. And obviously we've got this distinct east-west split in terms of the weather. I will flip that on its head. We're now starting to see warmer conditions in the west versus colder in the east. As can be seen here, this is the precipitation over the last 72 hours. You can see dry as a bone across the heart of Europe here, wettest across Iberia and also up across northern portions of, uh, of Europe. So it's actually a, a little triangle here of uh, wettest conditions, uh, both west and east and north, driest uh, across central areas in much of the UK, not recording any rain over the last three days or so. But in terms of the temperatures, this is how it's looking as of uh, 10 to 5 on this Thursday evening. And you can see here, clinging on to uh, something resembling colder across the far north of the continent and down across Turkey as well. But generally speaking, we've got a largely warmer than average pattern across the majority of the continent at the moment. So obviously we're going to be talking about the... Uh, the various aspects of the, the, the final stratospheric warming that took place a couple of weeks ago. Looks as if we are going to see a response to that. The Manjulian oscillation is um, heading into the null phase, but it may come back out in the phase of 7 and 8, which tends to promote um, more in the way of, of blocking across the, the mid to high latitudes. And therefore, you get the extremes of both warm and cold uh, within our latitude belt, so to speak. And I want to show you this here. It's interesting that, uh, in fact, let's have a quick look at uh, the MJO first of all before we head off into another uh, another topic or subject. Um, not subject, but another aspect. That's probably the best way to put it. You can see here that we've got wettest conditions, uh, the, uh, the, the greatest amount of convection. The MJO essentially is over the maritime continent at the moment, which tends to promote milder conditions. And that is the case over North America and over Europe here when you've got that phase four and five of the NJO. We we'll also have it across the North Pacific. And as we play through the next uh, week or so here, you can see that, it, that the pulse of convection may start to try and drift into the Central and East Pacific. We're starting to see widespread subsidence over the Indian Ocean here. So uh, that may start to kind of squash thunderstorm activity across the Indian Ocean, parts of the uh, the equatorial region of Africa, up into parts of India, and even towards the uh, Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia region, when you've got that subsidence entering this part of the world. But at the moment, anyway, it's very much a case of we've got strong convection over the maritime continent, and that tends to correlate to milder conditions and, and a, a further north ridge of high pressure over both North America and over over Europe. It's obviously a lot more complex than that, but they're uh, trying to make it as fairly straightforward as possible to understand. But uh, this is the month so far in terms of the anomaly. And you can actually see that uh, if it'll allow me to pull it up, just bear with a second here. So you can see here, this is the temperature anomaly for the month so far. Largely warm than average, yes. But we do have a cooler than average Iberia. Also, the southern half of the UK is actually below average here, especially from about, what, say, west of Bristol, all the way across the London area, north up towards the South Midlands here. We've got an area of below average conditions here. But generally speaking, the vast majority of Europe is warmer than average so far this month. Now, I want to pull up this tweet here by Franz. Uh, interesting information here with regards to that final warming. He says that the negative NAM descending into the troposphere, so this is obviously that strong warming that took place within the stratosphere to constitute that reversal in the mean zonal winds. It can be thought of as a lowering of the critical line, allowing high wave number Rosby waves to propagate more easily. The coupling will likely have impacts on the zonal circulation. So you can see here that we've got this strong blocking within the upper levels of the stratosphere, but that is projected to start to propagate downwards into the troposphere. And what that essentially means is we're likely to increase the pressure 
up into Greenland and up into the high latitude region here as we move towards the month of April. And uh, you can see off the CFSV2 for the month of April, we've got uh, quite a lot of uh, pressure, high pressure. Yes, you've not got an awful lot of low pressure on this chart throughout the Northern Hemisphere. That obviously um, will not be the case. We are going to see areas of, of troughiness and low pressure. But generally speaking, the pressure being greatest North Atlantic, Greenland and up towards the Arctic region is likely a response to this downward propagation of energy that blocking that takes place within the stratosphere then filters down into the lower portions of the atmosphere. And what that essentially will do is it's going to slow down the westerly momentum within the middle altitude flow. And uh, we're going to see this kind of very, very um, kind of prolonged state of sameness in terms of the weather pattern and what's interesting is that the the cfsv2 has actually kind of flipped a little bit from what was a drier than average april for the for the uk and ireland is it's actually going more average to slightly above average now below average across the south slightly wet than average across the north which is quite interesting but given the fact that we're going to have this block over greenland and the arctic region seen by the models anyway we don't obviously know for sure if that is definitely going to happen but it's going to be interesting my hunch would certainly be that we have weather conditions down towards the south maybe extending into the uh, the southern half of the uk driest the further north you go across uh, across the uk here so if we look at the the Canceps model you can see here this is april may and june by the way and it's firmly drier than average which is something that I'm kind of thinking a little bit more and more towards. And if we start to see this dry theme continue, we've had a dry February, we've had a dry March. Yes, we're going to see wet conditions developing over the next day, several days here and could see a, a more unsettled end to the month of, uh, of March. But generally speaking, if this theme continues and we continue to dry these soils out, once you're increasing that sun energy, that can lead to warmer temperatures and also higher pressure, uh, you know, in, in the vicinity of the UK and Ireland. So something worth just monitoring. This is me starting to build the ideas for the summer season for sure. But if we look at the month of, uh, of, uh, of April alone, you can see here that it is, let's go back to April, and uh, yep, there we go. So we've got firmly drier than average, then into the month of May, firmly drier than average, June, July, August. It's indicating a drier than average uh, you know, theme all the way to the beginning of autumn next year. We'll wait and see what happens here, by the way, but... Uh, if that was to be the case, now, yes, you can have cool and dry, but also you can have dry and warm. And, uh, yeah, it's just it's, it's just rather interesting to see the, the way this spring has gone so far, the back half of winter last year. Given this early stratospheric warming, the blocking that we've been seeing more and more often at this time of the year develop, it'll be interesting to see what really happens going forward here. Um, so let's have a look at the, the Northern Hemisphere view and look at the upper heights and see what the model is indicating here. So this is back to the month of April and see what it's showing. So again, like the CFSV2, we've got that block, that stone within the atmosphere, rerouting Atlantic weather systems away from the UK and Ireland here. Yeah, you can have a trough stuck underneath here in an area of low pressure and you can have actually somewhat unsettled conditions, but generally you're shutting down that westerly flow of the Atlantic and then the western areas of Europe, hence why the model is seeing such dry conditions here. Uh, looking at the month of, uh, of May, uh, high pressure to the west and north of the UK, lower pressure down towards uh, the B uh, Biscay region here. And uh, this is something that is starting to make me think that we could have a little bit of a repeat of a couple of Mays ago. Very dry conditions, high pressure, warm temperatures, so, yeah, quite interesting, uh, I must admit, with regards to, to the overall thinking here. So, going to continue to build the ideas through the rest of this week and uh, into the weekend. Obviously, April is fast approaching. Going to develop the, the April outlook uh, over the next week or so, so stay tuned for that. And uh, we'll just continue to watch this going forward. Let's have a quick look at the temperature anomalies then over the... Uh, let's look at the seven-day increments and then we'll end it there. 
of the CFS V2. So this is the upcoming seven days. Looking over the hemisphere, of course, so you've got North America, deep trough extending from uh, Hudson Bay all the way into the southeast United States, a big ridge of high pressure. Over the western half of the United States, we've got a big, strong ridge of high pressure shutting down the Atlantic. Got that trough over uh, Iberia. So you've got this very blocked up setup here at the moment, not a straight, flat flow by any stretch. The negative over the, the, over the Aleutians and the, the Gulf of Alaska, ridge over western North America, trough digging Arctic air, drilling it south into the Great Lakes region. Big, strong ridge of high pressure as a consequence of this uh, upper synoptic setup here. We've got obviously a very mirror diagonal amplified jet stream as well. Uh, pieces going south, pieces going north. And this is going to be the theme. And this is the response that happens when you see that downwell and that uh, downward transfer of energy from stratosphere into the troposphere. It blocks the whole sit situation up. And uh, yeah, so th this is the week. Two of the CFS V2, this is week three. So again, there's that response with the, 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 the stratospheric warming taking place here. Again, pressure a little bit further north, west of the UK. So that's shutting down the Atlantic flow. That's shutting down the moisture source of the Atlantic. We've got a trough of low pressure over Iberia, it looks like here. That may try and feed moisture northwards into what could be quite a warm air mass, especially once we move into the month of May. So it's uh, going to be interesting to watch this going forward. Hope you're enjoying the content here on the channel. I've been checking some of the comments, some very interesting comments, some uh, very pleasant, uh, kind words as well of support. It is greatly appreciated uh, that you watch these videos day by day. I hope you're enjoying it. Uh, if you haven't already done so, be sure to hit that subscribe button. It would be greatly appreciated. Absolutely free content six days a week here. Got the live stream coming up this Sunday at 4 p.m. as usual as well. Taking Saturdays off at the moment just to get a little bit of a break uh, in between seasons. It's been a very long winter. There had been content every single day of the week right the way through the winter. And uh, basically, I'm just giving myself a Saturday to kind of just relax a little bit and, uh, you know, enjoy some time with the family and whatnot. So uh, I hope you do appreciate that. Um, but the Tropical Outlook will be coming back in, uh, you know, several weeks' time. There will be contact content again back seven days a week coming up towards the end of May. So, uh, yeah, plenty of reason to stick around. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday, and I'll see you tomorrow with more. Bye for now.